Okay, great. So um, I think David's on. David, do you yes. want to get started or do you want me to introduce the mayor? Um, I'll, I'll let you introduce the mayor. You're uh, more friendly with her and you are fellow government affairs people. So uh, uh, I know Shelly very well. She's been such a terrific mayor. She's, uh, I know she supported the chamber in our great uh, uh, climate uh, change uh, initiatives a couple of years ago and, and with the legislature on single uh, use plastics and straws. And uh, we, we really uh, look forward to what she has to say to keep our, our city in, uh, in the best of hands. So uh, Stephanie, why don't you fill in the blanks? Okay, so um, Mayor Petrolia has been on the city commission for a really long time now. She's, um, I think she was a city commissioner for about five years before she became mayor. So I don't think there's anything I could tell you that you probably don't know about her already, but I'll give it a shot. So um, she went to FSU um, with a double major in finance and risk management. She owns a real estate business with her husband. I'm pretty sure you know that she raised four boys. So that in and of itself is a major accomplishment. But I'd like to point out that not all of them went to FSU. So you'll have to answer for that. I'm sure, Shelly. I think one of her boys picked my alma mater, which is University of Florida, which is, I thought was great. Um, the one thing that I want to say about Shelly is she has always been so supportive of women in leadership roles. And I've appreciated that very much over the many years that she and I have worked together. So um, I think that's all I have to say. She goes without introduction, really, because everybody knows her. So I'm going to hand it over to Mayor Petrolia, who's going to talk about maybe a little bit of a recap of what's been happening in the city in 2023 and what her priorities are for next year. So over to you, Shelley. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much. And it's great to be here. Thanks for the um, introduction. And uh, as uh, Stephanie said, uh, Oh boy, can I can I take a moment just to put that dog up? Yes, ma'am. Right. Hold <laughs> yes. it up for a second, sorry. So we've never experienced that before on a Zoom call. I don't know about you. <laughs> I'm glad it's not my dog today. Usually, it's it, my it dog. usually is, David. So you can be happy that it isn't yours. So we'll just give it two two minutes for the mirror. But nice to see all our city partners on. We're gonna definitely get to everybody. I thought I had it handled update. with one dog being up, but that wasn't the case. Figures, you know, it's kind of <laughs> like my boys. You never can just, it's not just the one. It's always more than one. I should remember that. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, you know. um, as Stephanie was saying, it's been great to work with uh, Stephanie through the years. I mean, from the DBMC, which I actually was the um, liaison for back when I was a commissioner first, high, uh, first uh, elected, uh, all the way through the transition of you becoming the uh, the director, the CEO of, of the of the um, uh, the chamber. So it's really cool to have that you know link and that past. I mean, I think I've known you as long as I've known anybody in the city. Um, as far as working, and one of the things that I have to tell you, and, and this was very uh, poignant that you mentioned, um, you know, being strong uh, leadership with females, we haven't had that in the city, you know, until just recently, um, as the only second elected uh, mayor, woman mayor in the city, and the first one ever to be elected twice. Um, that's unusual for an over 100 year history. Um, but I know that one of the things that that I found, um, especially um, going through COVID, which is really kind of what this year was about coming out of COVID. Um, but during that time, it was myself, you, Stephanie, um, the, the, the uh, CRA director, Renee, and also the DA director, uh, Laura, getting together and figuring out how do we help our businesses? How do we stay in business? How do we make sure that our city stays uh, strong through this time. And we came up with great ideas, especially uh, some of the things, the offering of information from the DDA, um, you know, and understanding what it was that the community needed down there, the businesses, in order to be able to survive. And I think that that's one of the reasons why we did so well, fared so well through those times, because some of our neighboring communities didn't uh, fare uh, as well as we did. So I know that we made some very, very good decisions based on businesses, but also based on um, the health of our citizens. You know, we were the only ones to uh, talk, to do the mask mandate all the way through the, um, the the lockdown period. And then after that, we were kind of advised that it probably wouldn't work because 
until everybody was doing something. It's very difficult to be the one group that does it, you know, does it differently. So anyway, but then we ended up in masks anyway, but we, so we were right on the front end of that. Um, what's going on in the city? I think it's a great question and what we've been doing in this past year. We have really gone down the path of trying to work with um, our city and getting more automated. I, you know, when I first came in in 2013, Carrie Glickstein was mayor. And I mean, we kind of looked at each other in with, with deer in headlights, looking at each other going, how in the heck is this city even functioning? We were on green screen technology. I mean, in 2013, lost the complete opportunity of taking old information and moving it into the newer forms of, you know, of, uh, of IT. I, we, we were at, at, an, at, a, at a loss as to what to do. It took the better part of the decade to figure out how to be able to get more automated just from being left so far behind in the dark ages. Because when you're talking about the amount of information that a city holds, you can't lose that because of the fact that windows had shut and that, that process of transferring information from one system to another to update it was kind of had, lost, had, had left us behind. It's been very, very difficult for us to do that. So we're just now getting our feet on the ground in moving into uh, some of the areas that we should have been almost in way back in 2013. For instance, just automated permitting. I know that that wasn't a big thing back then, but it's been something that most other cities have. And as a result of the permitting that we go through the hundreds of permits that we process in one month's time uh, to have everything having to be walked literally papers walked from one desk to another makes it absolutely uh you know it, it stops business at a standstill in our in our um or development services offices. So that's happening. Automatic pay, we haven't had that. People used to come to me and say, I, I go away six months out of the year. How do I pay my bills? I mean, you have to walk your bills in. So that's all being um, up and changed. And then we're all something that's gonna be uh, amazing. I think we're opening it up this month. The app reporting is gonna be an app where people can actually have an app on their phone. If they hit a pothole, they don't need to call Shelly. They can actually hit it on the app. It goes directly to the department that needs to take and address it. And it also holds somebody in the city accountable because the mayor's not accountable for those things. I know people think that I am and I, you know, suit up and, you know, take care of cleaning the water tanks and all those things. Not so true. But anyway, this is a way to be able to make sure that we're getting our are, you were doing something that makes our uh, constituency understand that counts and it's getting to the right people right away rather than having to go through an indirect uh, route. Um, we also just, you know, learned uh, a lot about our water in the last, I would say, probably, I don't know, a couple years. Um, and, and part of the issues with the water was the discoloration. I, I moved here in, I want to say, in Delray proper to 1990. Four. And I remember filling up my tub and going, I'm not getting into that. So, you know, to say that the water has changed from 1994 to now, it's not true. We always had a tint to our water. It was just a big, it was made a big scene about it. Um, there is something that is happening to water, but it isn't just our water, it's water everywhere. And, um, and that is that we have what are called forever chemicals leaching into our water supply. Now, Delray doesn't just dip in and have its own water supply. It's a water supply that is, you know, across the board, uh, most, most municipalities draw from it. It's called our, um, our aquifer. And as a result of these forever chemicals slowly going down into the uh, soil, through the soil and into our system, our water treatment plants have not been designed to take out those types of chemicals. So luckily, we're on the backside. Yeah. Nobody really kind of planned on doing this water treatment plant for a very long period of time, but we're on the backside of doing this water treatment plant. I, yeah. We're a little delayed. So as a result of that, we actually have more information and know what we're going to have to do in order to make our treatment plant meet the new um, uh, EPA requirements with respect to re extracting those, um, those forever chemicals out of our water uh, system and our water supply. So it really puts us in a good position rather than just have built something with an old standard and now having to redo it. We're actually in a, a better and more powerful position to build the right thing for us advancing forward, understanding that these chemicals should be removed 
and must be removed from our water supply. So that's the system that we're putting in. That's going to be breaking. We're in the, we're right on target with it. It should be breaking ground probably in 2023-24 era. And um, we're we're lining up money now for it to to make sure that we get. Uh, it's it's a very expensive endeavor, but it needs to be done and uh, and it's timely. So we've got that going. But we also have some other really great things happening. If you haven't been at our parks, you'll, I mean, if you haven't been there, take a look at these little pocket parks that we have. Raising my boys here. Yes, I do have one that went to, is going to UF. Good for him. Uh, to get in that school is very difficult. To, you know, I'm, I'm proud of them. But I do, I do lean towards uh, when they play and uh, go, go Knowles this year. Um, but one of the things that I noticed when we were um, when I was raising my boys here is that the parks really were horrible. I used to take my kids down to Boca Raton parks because they always kept up their parks. They have a very they have a separate taxing district for their parks, so uh, they have a lot of money coming in and can do. We uh, did have I think uh, mostly people on the commission that had children, so it wasn't a big issue for them. Um, what we have been doing is changing and updating all of our parks so that we have the art equipment and um, uh, the the children have almost a theme to the different parks and I have to do our parks and rec director uh, Sam E. Tot for taking that on as a challenge and really running with it. So up at the beach you're going to see that we've got the waves you know um, type of a park with all these different things that kind of mimic things, sea life and, and whatnot. We we do we have an exercise park at, at Barwick that goes all the way around the entire uh, you know um, uh, park itself. So there's all different types of parks and they're very unique um, to uh, any other park. So you can go to one one day and, and, and another one another day and have a totally different experience um, in Delray Beach. So not only are we doing that, but we are also redoing our 1970s largest community center, which is Pompeii Park. This is huge. Uh, we're actually going to take that right down to the bottom. We're not, we're not renovating the building that's there. It's old, it's tired, it's served its purpose, and it needs to come down. So we've got a brand new state-of-the-art a community center that's going to be built um, and we're, we're able to build it not on the footprint of the current community center so we can continue community center activities and still build this well it'll be a little inconvenient for people parking but they'll be able to build this and then we'll take that down so it, it provides both and we're also going to be putting an olympic size pool so we can have uh meets at our pool over at uh, pompeii park uh that will actually move closer to the uh the um the center the the community center so that people can actually use the community center if they want to for a birthday party and utilize you know the pool and, and, a, and one of the little bays, kind of like they do at some of these different water parks. So we're doing all of those things um, coming up and they're, they're expensive, but you know what? Uh, the city is, is it's, des it's deserved of it. Another thing, a big item that we're dealing with right now is uh, going through figuring out what we're gonna do with the golf course. Um, there's a lot of rhetoric out there and a lot of people who think they know more than anything. I I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't, even know what we're doing with that yet because we put it out to bid so we're waiting for these uh, uh you know the opportunity to really look at and analyze what is coming back to make a decision so for anybody that's out there talking about they're selling this they're doing that they have no idea because i'm, I'm one of the decision makers and have no idea so that's just jumping the 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 shark so to speak and and like others like to like start comments, rumors, whatever. It's, it's, it's not true. Let's wait, get the information back. We may choose to do nothing. I don't know. You know, I mean, it really depends on what comes back and, and how this, um, you know, uh, ends up being a, a good thing or not a good thing for the city, but we'll evaluate it when we get it in front of us. None of the commission has had anything in front of us yet um, with respect to the golf course but what we do know is this our golf course is legendary. It's, 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 um, it is, uh, it got a legacy, uh, 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 Donald Ross uh, section. We, um, it's been here, gosh, I wanna say from the early 1900s. And with other golf courses closing down, this isn't the time for us to do the same thing. First of all, we, we covet our open space and that is considered a large part of our open space in Delray Beach. But more so than that, it's great to have something that others have given up. Look at our downtown. We have something that most cities long ago gave up, these 
you know, smaller, beautiful downtown kind of feel. It's nostalgic. You feel welcome when you go down there. Everybody wants a piece of that action. That's long gone in most cities. Delray held on to that, just like we're going to hold on to this legacy golf course that we have and make it better. Now, there may be some shifting around. There might be that we decide to utilize the, the, um, the frontage on uh, Atlantic Avenue um, to reposition um, things like our uh, clubhouse and, and, and drone range. I don't know. Those are all in the question mark area that we're going to make a decision on. But we want to make sure everybody understands that this is something that's very important and near and dear to the hearts of, of our city. And also a huge asset to have at a time when other uh, communities are losing theirs. And by the way, you lose that, you sell that out, you ain't getting it back. We don't have any land here to be able to re, uh, you know, develop a new golf course. We are 98% built out in Delray Beach, which is a crazy number. Um, so we also, if you've noticed around town, have focused on doing roads and um, drainage, lighting, and also um, water lines. Uh, you know, it was a real eye opener when we were watching what was going on down over and over again in Fort Lauderdale, where they were having the floods of the sewers going down the middle of streets. Uh, we immediately went in, got all of our pipes uh, scoped so we know where our weakest points are and where they aren't so that we are not paving roads over really weak systems underneath so that we can get to those systems first. So that's what's happened. We have a process of making sure that we're stabilizing the, the, uh, the infrastructure that lies below the, uh, the roads before we actually do the major work to roads. Um, we're also adding a lot of um, bike paths. If you go down um, Homewood Boulevard, uh, 10th Street, uh, Barwick, uh, those are areas, and, and it's happened down on the south end of Swinton. We're now moving to the north end of Swinton and across uh, George Bush Boulevard Bridge. Those are all the areas right now that we're focused on um, making sure that we get uh, the roads uh, upgraded, the, the pipes, the, you know, all the um, infrastructure on those in those areas. And they were in dire need, by the way. It, it had been, you know, decades since they'd been addressed. So um, Brent Bridge is also being done and um, the county owns our bridges across the intercoastal and if you remember we had our uh, George Bush Boulevard bridge out I want to say it was like six to eight weeks because a part broke and of course it's an antiquated bridge um, they are going to be redoing that bridge as well so it's not it's going to be a while because nothing happens fast in government especially you know, as you go up the, ch the chain, um, but they are going to be replacing that. And we're hoping that they're going to listen to us and replace it with uh, really safe passages of crossing um, because we don't really have that on our bridges, and especially Atlantic Boulevard Bridge. That's a very precarious uh, crossing um, of the uh, actual grate system with no rails and uh, really no um, leeway between the traffic and the pedestrians. Um, if you fall off that little edge, you're right in the middle of traffic. And that's that's a bit scary. So we're working on that. And then um, finally, I just wanna say that, uh, you know, um, we are in a wonderful situation of booming businesses. We have businesses m wanting to move here. We are, our property values as reported by the tax appraiser when she was just in um, reporting to the city commission are actually higher on Atlantic Avenue than North Avenue, which I, I can't even uh, contemplate that. But to me, that just tells you what kind of a town we have here, that people are actually coming in and renting at those rates. Now, I think that that's <laughs> from my perspective, a little high. And you'll see that a lot uh, right now, we're seeing a little bit of a softening of the real estate market, a good thing, not a bad thing, because I think that those values were just really almost too high to, uh, you know, for, for, the, for the times and, and they are balancing out. And that happens all the time in real estate. But we actually are in a great position because our values have tr risen tremendously. It's great for our, you know, our um, owners of businesses and, and uh, prop rental properties, either rental or even just um, that they're resident residing in. Um, those are great things. And then the last thing, and this is probably the most difficult because I know that there's a lot of, you know, stuff out there about it is old school square. You know, 
that was a very, very difficult decision um, that we actually made to move on. But there was a lot of uh, there was a lot of things that a lot of people don't understand and know about that would have been happening for the years previous. What we are in the process of doing is just changing you know, uh, who's running Old School Square. It, it's not, we're not ripping out, uh, you know, our arts and entertainment, of course not, that we can't even do that. There's a, there's a deed on the property that doesn't allow it. Um, what we're trying to do is to make it bigger and better and uh, make it so that it's more welcoming and more inclusive. Um, and I think that we're accomplishing that and it will take some time, just like it took time to get to where we were. Um, but uh, we had a fantastic, uh, um, you know, tree lighting ceremony just uh, last, was it last week or was it this week? <laughs> I can't even keep up. Anyway, last week. So, um, but it was, it was phenomenal record crowds. We um, did something a little different, decided to uh, open up um, our street or close down our streets to open them up to pedestrians so that we could have a Yule Tide street street there. And I think it turned out great. It'll even be better next year. So what we're trying to do is to really you know, kind of bring home these festivals and the things that have made put us on the map, make sure that we don't lose that and we keep it going and we make it even bigger and better than it was before, but not so much so that it alienates our, our living our, our residential population, that it really does include them because that's really who are the drivers of our, our community. So those are the kind of the main things that are happening. Oh, and by the way, the DDA has um, partnered up with the city to make that happen on Old School Square. And, you know, if I had been thinking about it, and I know that some people had brought up the DDA in, in name before, but I, I didn't even think that, that they just make, make the most sense to kind of run those operations. They have the biggest stake in the downtown businesses doing well. And that is our grounds right there at the downtown business operations. It does, they do have a symbiotic relationship with old school square is doing nothing. It hurts the, you know, the business community down there. So this is actually a fantastic uh, uh, partnership and hopefully we'll have this ongoing because um, they do a great job over at the DDA is if anybody's been to any of their, um, um, you know, uh, organizations, festivals or events that they put on, they, they do it, uh, you know, top notch. So we're very excited in partnering up with them and we'll see where that takes us as well. And that's what I have moving forward. We're going to be working on a lot of what I just talked about. So those are things that we started, but they're going to be things that are going to be carrying over into the next year. Um, and then we're also going to do one other thing. Um, I know that we don't have access to our, um, our uh, great, uh, you know, Crest Theater at this point in time, but we are going to do some um, uh, town hall meetings. I think maybe four of them. And we're going to, hone in on specific things like um, parts of our city that we're working on in order for people who are interested in, let's say they're interested in our water and we do a segment on our water and uh, you know infrastructure. We'll do that so that we can kind of be very informative, open thing, <laughs> matters up, ask, let people ask questions, but we're gonna do a few of them next year. And we'll probably end up doing them in the chamber or at the uh, arts garage in order to be able to have the space to uh, accommodate the people. So that, that's what we've got planned for, for our um, future. And, and, you know, I'm, I'm counting down. I'm in my last uh, leg of this. Uh, I'm going to be uh, terming out in 2024. So kind of exciting. And um, it's been an honor, an absolute great honor. Back to Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. Back to you. Thank you, Shelly. David, <laughs> take it away. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, in 2024, are you going to run for president? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I can't hear you. Did someone say something? I said, are you going to run for president in 2024 when you're termed out? Oh, yeah. No way. Are you kidding me? I'm going to be <laughs> golfing. <laughs> so I, I got a question, Mayor. Um, legislative sure. session is starting in a few weeks. Uh, does the city have yeah. specific uh, goals it wants to pursue with uh, the legislature for this session? We do. Um, you know, what we normally do with legislative session is we have a um, lobbyist that comes to us and tells us kind of where the money is. Uh, we don't waste our time with having giving them a wish list of all the things that we want. Instead, what we do is find out where is the money so that we can go after that money. Because if we can get some of the money from that legislative session, it alleviates us having to use tax dollars that we are, are bringing in and we can use that in another fashion, in another way. So in the past, it's been a lot to do with, um, well, there was obviously the big uh, recovery uh, timeframe, but uh, water is a big issue down here. Rising tides, 
our, our systems of um, drainage are not working the way that they used to. It used to be all about, you know, gravity pulling it down and, and, and carrying it out. That's not working anymore because what's happened is, is the, the tides have rised above where those, uh, you know, pipes are letting out or the seawalls are, are made to uh, withstand. And so um, that I think is probably where they're going to be focusing that and renourishment of beaches. That's always been um, an issue. Um, that we can usually get money from. So what we normally do is find out where's the money and then we go after it. We find out what projects in our town are we kind of almost shovel ready that we can throw in there and get the money to be able to come back. Now, as far as um, other big issues like guns and things like that, we don't normally as a city get involved in those types of legislative issues. We don't uh, uh, normally um, uh, push that because our, our government is on a nonpartisan basis. And what we're basically doing is working for the city. Um, so those, uh, those are things that we do on a personal level, if that, if, if that makes sense, David. Sure, so when, when you do have those points, um, we'd like to oh. coordinate Gosh, with I'm... you so we can uh, lobby with you. Say it again, because you, you, you're breaking up. I said, when you get those issues uh, with the legislature, could you, uh, coordinate with us so we can be with you uh, and supporting you. Absolutely, 100%. I'll, I'll speak with uh, Stephanie about what we're gonna be going forward. And you know what, that's a great uh, opportunity for you guys to like push the issues um, uh, even behind us uh, so that the legislative body understands that it's not just the city, but it's the city and the chamber and the, the business people in the community that are all pushing it. So absolutely, we'll stay in touch, uh, Stephanie, on that. For sure. Thank Thanks. you, David. Any questions for the mayor? I have a comment. Robert. I would like to say thank you about the parks because my, my kids are homeschooled. I have four girls and my wife uses, you know, Barwick, Pompeii, Anchor Park, Catherine Strong Park. They're awesome. I mean, it's so, I can't believe more people don't use those parks. They're so great how you guys have redone those. And it's just really, really great for the kids. And it's, and so, it's you know. I'm so happy to hear that, Robert, that you understand and see the difference that we have made, because I'm telling you, my children are now in college. And when I, they were growing up here, there were no parks really that oh, you yeah. could do. And it was sad. I used to, like I said, have to go to my neighboring towns to take them to parks. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, it was like in 2013 or so, we had people coming on the commission that had children. So there was a change in that perception of what was important. And so we made this uh, uh, initiative. And like I said, we had great people, staff behind us, putting this uh, to, um, uh, you know, to, into business and, and making it happen for us. And I mean, they've gone leaps and bounds beyond what my expectations were that you can go to any park and have a different experience. And I just think that, that is just, just so great for our city because we're not, we don't have these big, huge parks like they do down in Boca. We've got small parks. So, but to make something very unique to that park is really great. And that's, uh, that's where I have to tell you, I hand it to the, the staff for uh, having that, um, that, uh, you know, uh, understanding and imagination to bring it uh, a dream to our city. So I, I agree with you hundred percent. It's great. Yeah, I mean, it's really great, I would say, because you don't even have to pay. I mean, you have to pay a little bit to go swimming at Pompeii, but it's just yeah. something free. You don't have to go. Right. And the parks are really nice. I, I went to Atlantic when I was a kid. I remember those days, 1995, I graduated and there there was nothing. I mean, it's so much better now. It's really great. Yeah. Thank you so, so thank much. You. Any other questions for the mayor? Now's your chance. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was such a thorough report. So thank Can't you, Mayor. I'm too early. Thank you, Mayor. Thank well, you, guys. I really, I really appreciated hearing the recap of everything this year. It's just to reiterate, it's a huge list. The automated permitting is such a huge accomplishment, it and it's so important for our business community. And I know so many people are happy about that. I didn't realize that on um, the Pompey Park, they're going to create the new building and keep services going at the same time. That's brilliant. And I wasn't aware of that. So I think I know everything, but I don't. So I, that's something <laughs> I learned. And um, infrastructure isn't sexy, but it's so important 
And the fact that the city's on top of that is really great. And I love that you're doing some ta town hall meetings in 2023. We're happy to help with that in any way. I think that'll be great for the community. So I learned a lot. Thank you. Great. Well, we've got a lot of things on the agenda and on the calendar. I hope everybody kind of comes out and joins in because it's really exciting. And, you know, the city is really um, just going and blowing. And we're so excited to be able to deliver post-COVID, uh, you know, um, these great um, festivals and uh, and uh, events that uh, the city had, had been known for prior. And um, now we want to just make sure that we're not going to lose that, that moment because it really does make a difference and it makes it really kind of turns on you know uh, the spotlight to Delray Beach which helps again businesses and our you know our property value and you know everything else that happens so we've really got the engine going and we just need to keep it going down that path so that's what we're doing all right thank you mayor thank you thank you Thank Chief you, Toby is on the on the call, and we haven't heard from him in a while. Thank you for joining us, Chief. Uh, we look forward to hearing an update from the police. That's fire. Yeah. Uh, a fire. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, yeah, this is uh, Chief Tommy with the fire department, and and Mayor, that was a wonderful speech. I mean, you can tell you're so proud of your city, and it's uh, it's awesome to hear you talk about it. It really is. Um, as for the fire department, uh, we are doing very well. Um, as you know, we are a class one fire department. Uh, we're also accredited, internationally accredited. Uh, there's not that many. There's very few, less than 1% that are actually both of those. Uh, we're very excited this year. The uh, commission uh, voted on a master plan for our fire stations to replace our fire stations over the next 10 to 15 years, which is a huge accomplishment, right? So Everybody knows that our whole city, everywhere you go, whether it's in the ground where you can't see it or city hall or police department, or fire department, you know, we really had no plans in the past. And now I'm so excited to, to, to see that we're making these plans for, you know, the fire department, for the police department, for city hall, and they're all coming to fruition. And it's really, really, like the mayor said before, it's an exciting time for Delray. And we're really excited in the fire department. Our guys are really pumped about it. And uh, we're looking forward to it. So uh, everything's going very well in the fire department. Thank you, Chief. Any questions for Chief? I have a reminder for Chief. This okay. is Laura. What's happening hey, Laura. on Sunday? We have our surf festival, the life from the from your ocean rescue department division. Yes, ma'am. That's right. That's right. I'm sorry, I forgot about that. We do have our surf festival on Sunday. It was uh, this is a um, it was rained out the last time, right? So this is the makeup day this Sunday. So I encourage everybody to come out. It's a wonderful time. If you've never been, it's it's really a cool event to to see. So if you can come out on Sunday, it would be awesome. Thank you. So Laura, I was going to ask you your report next. So you uh, just take it over. Uh, Laura Simon, awesome. CDA, oh, my thanks. partner. Thank you. Um, as everybody knows, I'm not shy with the microphone. I've seen on Tuesday night. So um, yes, it was Tuesday, Mayor, uh, that we did lit, lit up the tree. So just a few days ago, it's been a little bit of a blur these past couple of weeks. But um, thank you, Mayor, for your kind words to the DDA and um, for your passion and commitment to the city. It is um, it is a you've been in this that seat for, for a long time up there on the dais and. Um, made a lot of uh, traction and a lot of input and uh, progress for our, our for my hometown and for the hometown for many. So thank you, and especially in a lot of a lot of difficult times. So uh, we appreciate it here in, in our organization for sure, because we couldn't do it without the support of the leadership. Um, and at our organization, we're busy. We're very busy. We've um, done a lot this past couple, this past month of November. We uh, celebrated Shop Small Saturday, as you all know that um, that is a tradition. And our downtown is filled with um, ninety six percent of our businesses are small. We know we we hear this. I see a lot of the the facts out there that you know we all were filled with all corporate and you know too many big box. And there's very very few. That's all rumor. There's very few, and you need in a downtown in an urban center to be successful. You need big box. You need some. You need a few. They've got big buying power and big marketing power, and so let them spend the money. <laughs> and we love them, but they and they bring 
a great following to us, but we do have some very special, both longtime businesses as well as new businesses that are independent and very small and doing very well. Uh, thanks to our, you know, all of our partners here at the chamber and all our community that come out and support them, especially during these types of events such as Shop Small Saturday. So we did our ornament giveaway. We've created a glass surfboard ornament uh, by Bob Schmidt, and we do have some leftover that we will be selling. So um, if you didn't shop on that Saturday and you will be um, putting out there how we're going to sell those going forward. So so look for that. Uh, tonight we are, um, we have First Friday Art Walk um, as we have do every month, uh, the first Friday of the month. It's a gallery stroll and it encompasses um, many of our galleries and studios and um, set art centers such as the Arts Garage and the Arts Warehouse, um, sometimes the uh, Historic Society and different uh, of our cultural centers get involved. Uh, but tonight we've got, um, we are doing a pop-up in front of the Cornell Museum. And we will have an artist there doing live painting right on the front steps. Uh, the museum is not open yet, but um, we're working on it. And but we are doing an activation for Art Walk. And we are, we do have the Yuletide Carolers strolling the uh, Pineapple Grove area. So they'll start at the Cornell Museum and then stroll the avenue and down Pineapple Grove. So they're, I don't know if you all have seen them, but they are amazing. And they're, it's just lovely to be out there and really gets you in the spirit of the holidays. So that's from six to nine tonight. Uh, so we can just invite everybody to come out. Um, we are also, you know, our board meeting is on the 12th of December and we're working closely um, with uh, a lot of our businesses are doing, we've, we're seeing a lot of um, renovations coming through and remodels and uh, just some class one site plans coming through. So we'll be reviewing a few of those uh, on that 12th, if you're interested. And also we've um, saw a few this past month in November, Blue Gallery is gonna get a facelift, which is great. Um, Rami is investing quite a bit into that um, corner and it'll look beautiful. He's doing really, really well. And so we're excited to see that. So if you have any interest in um, you know, hearing more and seeing more, please definitely attend our meetings or at noon on the second Monday of every month. But lots going on and we're here and accessible. So please reach out. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. Thank you, Laura. Thank you. Any questions for Laura? All right, uh, busy, busy over there, the DDA, so much is going on. Thank you, Laura, for all you do and your team. Um, the mayor spoke about uh, climate change and uh, water and high tide. So that brings us to Kent Edwards, our city sustainability officer. Good morning, everyone. Um, happy Friday and happy holidays. Um, we do have a lot of, of projects going um, on, um, but I'll focus on, on trees this, this morning and, and keep it short. Uh, actually, tomorrow uh, at Carver Middle, we have a, a planting plan. So more than uh, uh, 100 trees are going to be going in there. This is the first of the two plantings that, that's going on at, at Carver. We also um, have worked with the Spady uh, Museum and, and CRA. And on January 21st, we will have a planting uh, or we're planning. Uh, it's almost all uh, finalized um, at the museum site and CRA. So we're, we're focusing with a, a lot of partners to get on city and city quasi-governmental close uh, partners um, to, to get as many trees into those areas while we're also working with other partners. We have uh, identified and have an approved plan uh, that we've included all the different city departments on um, off of uh, Southwest 10th Avenue. That's near Wallace, close to Lynn. There's two retention areas there. And uh, historically, there have been questions about planting in, in retention areas, but we looked at uh, uh, reports, uh, water quality studies, habitat utilization, benefits to retention, sites that come because of uh, prevention of, of erosion. And in both of those sites, there is some erosion. So over time, it, it's actually something that the trees will benefit in multiple, multiple ways. Um, and we have uh, about 70 trees, I think, overall that will go there. And we're looking to identify partners that are close to these uh, major planting sites so that we can have a, a significant impact on the urban heat island effect of, of, of climate change. 
we actually were evaluating and there there are a lot of opportunities for for funding and studies out there so many that we really have to focus um, our our attention and make a list of, of those but one of them that we um not sure we'll be able to take advantage of this year but maybe next year NOAA has funding for uh, providing equipment that volunteers can mount on their cars and then in the middle of, of the summer uh, a date is picked and they drive and get uh, like every three seconds a recording of temperature data and the benefit there is right at the beginning of the tree planting program in, in year two it, or three, if we can get that data, then 10 years down the road, we'll be able to compare and actually have empirical information that shows we invested this money. It is for good for, for many, uh, uh, many issues, including heat uh, control. So um, uh, that one will be on our radar, even if we don't go this year. We also have uh, uh, planting plans that have been approved by school district and looking at dates uh, for Plumosa School, February 18th and, and March 4th. And we have multiple other polygons within the uh, city that I'm actually putting together emails for, and we'll, we'll get the, the approvals from other city staff. Um, also on trees, um, the tree inventory report that uh, we received earlier this year, it identified multiple uh, dead, very poor quality and invasive species uh, locations. So uh, we're working with purchasing to get a, uh, uh, contractor hired to take those out, hopefully make some additional uh, planting sites and certainly take out some hazards um, from those. We are writing up a greenhouse gas inventory report. Uh, that was the, the final step out of uh, the uh, greenhouse gas in inventory project where we gathered data and ho hopefully in two to three years when this is redone, we won't even need guidance on that. We'll have all the expertise and access to tools where we'll be able to, to do it in-house. And uh, also, we have uh, been doing habitat restoration training. Um, the Institute for Regional Conservation and George Gann uh, group uh, has an agreement. And in addition to the work at Atlantic Dunes, which they, they have a volunteer day tomorrow, um, we're also using their expertise to train our maintenance staff to recognize invasive species so that while they're out doing their, their regular work, um, have a little bit more knowledge, a little bit more tools and improve our parks and, and our city properties even, even more so that when we um, can advance our, our uh, pocket park um, and small habitat areas with other partners, then we'll really enhance our, our habitat re resilience. So lots of things going on, but I'll, I'll stop there unless there's any. Uh, questions. Thank you. Thank you, Kent. Any questions for Kent? Uh, Kent, you've been in the air for uh, three years now, I believe, um, in, in uh, your well, present uh, job. Thank you. Came in during COVID and he's, he's really uh, created quite a department and, and really helped the city with it, all its initiatives and sustainability. So thank you for all you do, Kent. Uh, any questions for Kent Edwards? Okay, uh, we have two people from the uh, CRA, Kim Fan and Alexina, uh, who's gonna speak or give a report or both, the tag team. Uh, Hi, good morning. It's Kim Fan, legal advisor for CRA. I'll be doing the update. Um, good morning, Mayor. And I, before I start an update, I did wanna say that I did take my little girl, uh, toddler, my family out to the Christmas tree lighting and she had a blast. She loved the lights and the activities that are available for the family. So that was a really fun event. Um, so on to the updates. Uh, so we do have the green market happening at Old School Square um, tomorrow from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. And then we also have Crafted on the Ave which is happening at Libby Wesley Plaza from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. tomorrow also. So that's you know, a great time to go shop and buy holiday gifts. Um, the Arts Warehouse is also participating in the first Friday Art Walk, which again is happening tonight. And then we have our monthly board meeting on December 8th at 4 p.m. at the Arts Warehouse. And I also wanted to mention, if you guys didn't notice, that we did start on the demolition of the Schuler um, old building on Atlantic. Um, so uh, we received an SWA grant, so we've started the demolition on that. And that's it. Thank you, Kim. Any questions for the CRA? OK, 
Okay, then we'll go next to uh, City Hall and uh, Jeff Orr, Assistant City Manager. I finally got to meet Jeff in person at the, at the legislative lunch and it was a pleasure finally shaking his hand instead of Zoom. So Jeff, uh, an update? Did Jeff leave? He might have, he was on earlier. All right. Oh well, no, I hope there's not a city hall emergency. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, we'll go to uh, Steve Weitzman, Palm Beach County property appraiser. Always interesting facts from Steve. All right, good morning. Uh, I have two things. One thing which I will always continue to harp on. If you or someone you know purchased a home recently and they do not already have homestead on it, they need to apply, they can do it online. It will be for 2023 if they don't already have it, but they can go online and do it now. Whether we have the deed in our system, whether we've gotten it from the clerk's office or not, they can go ahead and do it. And the same thing for portability. And I put in chat our website, and if they want to talk to somebody about portability or homestead exemption, there is the number for our Delray office. The other thing is um, on the 30th, our condominium manager, Greg Goldberg, and our condominium field supervisor, Chris Danny, went out and did an inspection in Kings Point, which is where there was tornado, tornado damage during Ian. And uh, they will be talking about that in the uh, assessment ramifications at the real estate roundtable. So if you're interested, contact either Christina Morrison or the chamber for that. And that'll do it for me. <laughs> okay, thank you, Steve. Um... I saw Felicia from Lois Frankel's office, Senator uh, Frankel's office. Is she still on? Would you like to give a report? Hi, uh, yeah, I'm still here. Thanks so much. Um, just a quick hello to everyone, two quick items. We've moved our office into Delray. We're in West Delray, but nonetheless in Delray Beach, um, which is the middle part of our district. We're in the AmTrust building on Atlantic at 74.99. Uh, unit 206. So if you need us, we are up and going and ready to hear your questions or help with any issues. Also, um, just want to reiterate that um, my boss has continually said and will continue to be supportive of uh, the mayor's plans on infrastructure. There is a lot of money out there. We're going to start holding some webinars to make sure that the city managers and the mayors are aware of what's available. Um, there'll be a lot of money for things that have been kicked down the road too long, um, like water treatment plants, like roadways, like repairing bridges. And we look forward to working with the city and making all those improvements for the great city of Delray. So thanks so much. Thank you. Any questions for Senator Frankel's office? Okay. Um, I don't know if we missed anybody except for Stephanie Hillman. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't forget you, Stephanie. I could never forget you. Thank you. It's been so long. It was 20 years? How long did you come to Delray? About 15 years ago. Seems longer. Um, <laughs> anyway, so I keep thinking it's end of the year. Everything's slowing down. But no, we actually have a lot going on at the Chamber in December. So just um, really quickly, um, don't forget we have Delray Morning Live every Wednesday morning, except for the between Christmas and New Year, we won't have that. So join Amanda and Jamel. Um, and they always have fun antics going on. Um, we've got a ribbon cutting that we had last night at Port Salon, which was great on December 6th. It's nonprofit council and they're having a storytelling competition. So that's a lunchtime meeting and we've got several nonprofits doing storytelling via video. So that should be really interesting. Um, we've got a ribbon cutting next week at Tipsy on Linton. And thank you for Steve for mentioning the real estate roundtable. That's at 9:30 on December 8th at Sklar Furnishings. We also have the tourism roundtable this month as well, and that's going to be in person this time on December 13th at the Chamber. And we're going to hear from um, Don Colds. I can't say his name properly. He is the consultant that's handling the tourism master plan, and the city has agreed to go forward with the tourism implementation plans. So we're really excited about that. It's our first meeting about it. So it's December 13th at 10 a.m. at the Chamber, and we'll have some holiday goodies and coffee for you as well. And then the holiday party, everybody's invited. Um, it's free and open to our Chamber members. It's on December 15th at Hyatt Place. It starts around 5 p.m., and we're looking forward to seeing you all there and end the year that way. 
And for next month on the first Friday, our guest is going to be Sherry Boyer, and she is from the Federal Reserve Bank in Atlanta. So she's going to be talking a little bit about the economy, obviously, and interest rates and what we can expect in 2023. So we're excited about that. So we hope you tune in on the first Friday in January. And that's all I have. Oh, great. Thank you, Stephanie. Uh, we're a little early. So if anybody we missed has an announcement, uh, they're, they're welcome to the, make them now. The mayor's raising her hand. Did you have something to say? Chime in. Just wanted to say that it's Congresswoman Frankel, not Senator Frankel, just to give her the respect. That oh, she I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> Thank uh, you, Mayor. <laughs> got it. I think we, we've got Maybe that. Maybe it's just wishful thinking. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to have her be a senator. Okay, so anything else from anybody? All right. Well, we hope to see you at some of our upcoming events in December and definitely at the First Friday Forum in January. And thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Have a great weekend, everyone. Thanks. Bye.